So I am a videographer by trade, certainly not a miniature painter. My days out working usually look something like this. So obviously weddings over the past couple of years haven't been going ahead as usual. And I got my introduction to this hobby working as a videographer at Games Workshop. Ultimately, I decided to leave and return to my own business as things were becoming somewhat a little bit more normal. But I left with a couple of things. One was working with a bunch of really great people who some of which I now get to call my friends. And the second is a Brother. ton of Warhammer. My name's Patrick and welcome to my pile of shame. So when I left UW at the tail end of last year, I had two options as I saw it. Sell off what I had, never really think about it ever again, or try and learn how to paint it. And here we are. I am a complete novice painter and the premise of this show is only using YouTube content, painting tutorials made by fans and creators of Warhammer. I am gonna try and learn how to paint or see how good a painter I can become or something. When the new Warpsmith was released, I decided I really wanted to have a stab at painting it as an Iron Warrior. So in this first video, I'm gonna paint four different Iron Warriors from four different YouTube creators, see which one I like the best. Maybe I'll end up merging bits of them together to try and get some practice, come up with the color scheme that I like the most to paint my Warpsmith at the end. And diving straight into it, the first tutorial I'm gonna have a go at is from Pete the Wargamer. Oh, and one last thing before we get started. All of these pieces to camera, I'd be lying if I said this was the first time I filmed them. This video took quite a while. I didn't really like some of the talking bits that I did. So you're gonna notice some horrendous continuity errors with the length of my beard and or hair. Just try and get past it if you can. So the first tutorial I'm going to try and follow is the cheapest one of the bunch, uh, which is Speed Painting Iron Warriors from Pete the Wargamer. And it's only seven paints, under 30 quid, which is great. And I've started off spraying this guy black, and I can tell that I've done a terrible job at removing some of the mold lines. But to make up for that, I have drilled and broken the gun barrel. Um, so first things first, what I'm going to, well actually, before I start dry brushing, I'm going to drink lots of tea from the hollowed out skull of Spider-Man, and then I'm going to dry brush it all with lead belt gel. That's right, I'm here to show you how to speed paint your sand. So I've just finished applying the contrast paint to the leg and the shoulder and whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, I guess I'm just contemplating how on earth I'm gonna try and do these hunter stripes and have them not look. Heresy! <laughs> um, I've never tried to paint perfectly straight lines, never mind lots of them in succession. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, in Peace Tutorial, he does just paint them on the leg. You'll see I've done the shoulder pad here. I wish I could say that was because I fancied the challenge and wanted to make things harder for myself, but in reality, uh, I overloaded my brush, Deviant. took up painting the trim, which went onto the shoulder pad, tried to cover it up with some lead belcher, but it didn't really match the rest of the finish on the Marine. So, slapped some paint on it, made things harder for myself. I will regret it, I'm an idiot, but we'll see what happens.
hazard stripes are on, a couple of washes later with some contrast paint and this guy is finished. Following that tutorial was nice and straightforward, I feel like I've managed to replicate what was on screen reasonably well, probably through the uh, contrast paints rather than my own skill. Um, but it's a really cool looking marine, nice and weathered, I think the dry brushing has saved a ton of time, no edge highlights in sight, but you still get that definition on the corners and stuff like that, which is, which is awesome. Um, if I'm getting a bit pernickety with what I've done, I think the hazard stripes could use a bit more work. The ones on the shoulder pad especially are a bit bulbous and a bit close together at points, not as uniform as I would have liked. The ones on the legs, which I did afterwards, are a significant improvement, even though some of the angles are a bit meh. But um, yeah, that tutorial was great. Super happy with how that guy looks. On to the next one. So the second tutorial I'm going to try and follow is Painting Iron Warriors by The Painting Coach. I have watched a bunch of his videos before, I do really like them, it's probably got something to do with his accent, it's amazing. If I can try and get a soundbite of him saying Balthazar Gold, I would use that as my alarm. There was one paint that for the life of me I couldn't get a hold of and that was Chrome Model Air by Vallejo, so instead I opted for Green Stuff World Chrome Metal Airbrush and just in case it was crap I got Green Stuff World Chrome Metal and we will see how these go. Well, I mean you know that I'm filming this after the fact so I know how it went but you don't. So when it came time to use the chrome paints, I did what pretty much I've seen everybody do on YouTube and is put air paints straight onto a wet palette. And with this Green Stuff World air paint, as you can see, it just dispersed absolutely everywhere and was completely unusable trying to brush it onto the model. So thankfully, I obviously bought the normal chrome metallic paint and putting that onto my wet palette it seemed like we were getting off to a good start but after a while I noticed it was clogging up my brush and looking at the palette it all just seemed to be congealing into some kind of weird chrome goo and was completely unusable so I just put it in a normal dry palette and I have to say with this paint specifically I didn't really like texture of it it's it's very different to what I'm used to which is basically Citadel paints this was quite expensive it was over a five or a bottle and I wasn't really a fan um, but I wanted to paint these guys I wanted to use a chrome paint uh, but there we go lesson learned so here we are finished this tutorial and this Iron Warrior. Having a look at it, it is a lot brighter. Initially, side by side, under these studio lights, I did think I preferred the look of Pete's Marine. But over time, and especially looking at these under normal room lighting from a distance on a table, I am drawn to the shiny boy. I just, I think it just stands out that little bit more, I guess. Um, which I don't know if is a good enough reason to necessarily prefer one over the other, but there we go. So looking at the stripes first of all, I tried to learn from my mistakes on the first model and if I made a mistake with the black, instead of widening the rest of the line, making the yellow smaller, 
I would cut back in with Wraith Bone and then go over it with the contrast paint again. But as you can see on the gun, when I've done a few layers of the contrast paint, it has gone quite orange. Whereas you can see at the back, it is yellow, which is the color it kind of should be to begin with. I really like the bronze trim and I'm pretty happy that I've managed to go around it with the gray in the black pauldron. A direct comparison between these two models is, is perhaps a bit unfair. Pete's was a speed painting tutorial and half the price, half the cost, the results you get from this are brilliant. But again, slightly shiny. I do like the horns as well. I don't know why. And the bag's cool, but there we go. Right. Moving on. This time, it is the man himself, Mr. Tooth and Coats, Iron Warriors by Duncan Rhodes. To begin with, there's a lot of similar techniques in this tutorial to the ones that Pete uses, especially with the contrast paint over the metallic. So I'm gonna bring you in once I've got to that stage and I'm adding in those extra details that are in this video. As a quick aside, Duncan is obviously painting a Havoc in his tutorial. I'm painting a regular Marine. So with the bags and some of the leather, I am using the same recipe from the painting coach and all I've done this time is try and add a bit more weathering into it. I don't really know if I did a good job or not. So here we are with the finished article and the thing that really jumps out to me on this one that I like is the eyes. I think they look evil as heresy. Like the person in this is just an evil brother and is probably quite ill as well. The red, the orange, the yellow and then the little dot of white. I mean I could have done a better job of doing them, of course I could have done, but they do look really cool. I don't like my application of the wash. I think it's quite messy in places, um, probably too much on my brush, you know, me being completely inept and out of my depth. I think the contrast paints perhaps work a touch better for me, but using that Avalanche Sunset, when I inevitably messed up painting the stripes, I could cut back in and it was easier to correct those mistakes. On a dark marine, these do stand out and I do really like them. I think the only downside, again, completely my fault, was, especially on the pauldron, where I've cut back in with the yellow, you can see some brush strokes and, some, and a bit of a buildup of paint. I don't know if I let the layer underneath completely dry or the paint I was using wasn't quite thinned enough. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments and please do, please let me know where I'm going wrong. So directly compared to Pete's Marine, I think all the extra details from Duncan, the eyes, the bullets, they do help it stand out that little bit more. The stripes are definitely brighter, but I do think I prefer the Wildwood wash for shading rather than the uh, Reichland flesh shade. So moving on to my fourth and final tutorial, it's Painting Iron Warriors by Juan Hidalgo. So it was at this stage I realized I'd built some of these Marines pretty terribly to be Iron Warriors. The stripes should be on the right shoulder, not the left, the left should be black. So I tried to uh, take, take the pauldron off, ended up just ripping the arm off. But you know, Juan paints his as a sub-assembly, so I can too and I totally meant to do that.
Here we are with the finished result. And I have to say, these are my favorite hazard stripes that I've done. Uh, they are a bit chunkier and there was just one simple phrase that Juan said in his tutorial was when you're painting them on the pauldron, just make sure you keep the orientation the same, paint from top to bottom and you'll keep your lines a lot straighter. And lo and behold, it worked. I think with the other ones, it was moving around quite a lot and just sort of lost where I was. But with these, a bit chunkier, kept the marine straight, kept the lines a bit straighter and I'm really, really happy with the results. Cutting in with the yellow paint to give the, the black stripes a bit of weathering, I would have preferred it if they were a bit sharper, that's down to me, but then glazing with that wild wood and then with the flash kits yellow, I think just really makes them stand out. They look really cool. I really enjoy the glazing on the armor on this one. Going down with the wild wood and then up with the brighter metallics worked really well. I found taking a bit of moisture off the brush was really helpful for that. And glazing with contrast paints, so much easier than washes I've found. So that is quite noob friendly and I appreciate it very, very much. On a technical level, I think this was my favorite tutorial and I think the armor on this one is my favorite. I think the stripes are my favorite, but when looking at all of these Marines all together, I can't help but look back to my first shiny boy. And I think with Juan's Marine, I think it's perhaps the gold trim. I think I prefer the darker trim that's from like the painting coach from Duncan from Pete. I think I like bright armor, dark trim. So maybe there's an amalgamation of these two in the future and we'll see how that goes. So here we are heading towards the end of this video. I have painted my four Iron Warriors. I have elements of each that I think I prefer. I like the eyes on Duncan's Marine. I like the stripes and the silver armor from Juan's, but the bronze from the painting coach. And that being said, these tutorials were quite expensive and very, very close with this speed painting tutorial. Like I still think the stripes on the legs are some of the best that I have done. And that was all done for half the price and half the time. And uh, yeah, that was really, really cool. So as a way of saying thank you to these creators, I've joined them all on Patreon for the next month. And I also bought the new Kill Team box through the Painting Coaches affiliate link to Goblin Games. And I do really want your input in this as well. If you have a favorite from the Marines that I've painted here, or if you've painted Iron Warriors before, please let me know. I'm, I'm really eager to, to see what everyone thinks and what I can potentially do to uh, paint this Warpsmith. I am Ducker. at painting and I do need your help. <laughs>